Alright guys, welcome back to Death From Above 40k. Uh, it's battle report time again, so get excited. We've got Jakey Boy back here. We're <laughs> limited on access to people who can play due to uh, not being allowed to go outside. So we, we've been huddling together and uh, getting these battle reports out. So as you can see, we've got uh, Space Wolves taking on the tower today. I'm going to be heading up my Space Wolves, which I've made some changes to. And Jakey Boy's going to be heading up the tower, which we're trying out some of the Psychic Awakening rules for those as well. So... I'll go over the Space Wolves list and break down what I've done in that, some of the changes, and we'll go through it. So, over here, for the Space Wolves, we've got a new 1,500 points. So, what are the new things? First things first, we'll start with the new Warlord. So, I've taken Ragnar Blackmane out, and I've made a Wolf Lord on Thunderwolf. I've decided to give this guy two Wolf Claws, um, and then decided to give him the Master Crafted Wolf Claws. So, that's his, that's his relic. So, on the charge, you'll be getting seven uh, attacks. It's strength five, AP two, damage two, reroll hits, reroll wounds. So, I thought that was quite tasty. And then he's got Saga of the Wolfkin, which gives him that extra attack on the charge. And when he kills a heap of stuff, it gives other people attacks on the charge. So, there's him. Then the next one is I've given a Wolfguard battle leader here. So, I'm paying the one command point to give him the Wolfenstone. He's got a hammer, shield jump pack so he'll be riding along with the guys so that's the two hqs for the battalion in the battalion we've got five man intercessor squad power fists on the sergeant auto bolt rifles on the blokes coming up here we've got a gray hunter squad five of chainsaws bolt guns one with a plasma pistol and then at the front we've got the pack leader in terminator arm with power fist storm bolter coming over here we've got a blood claws squad so one with a flamer the others with chainsaws, bolt pistol. We've got a wolf guard guy in there with power sword. And then we've got the wolf guard pack leading terminator arm up the front here with uh, two wolf claws. So that's the three troops choices. Then at the front, to ride along with my wolf lord, we've got five thunder cav. So I've given them, four of them have wolf claws and shields. And one of them, the pack leader, has a thunder hammer. So that means while they're riding along with the, uh, this Wolf Lord now as well, on the charge, they'll be getting a full re-roll to hit and re-roll to wounds with the Wolf Claws, which I thought was quite nifty. So that should hopefully work out well. We'll find out. Um, then we've got a, I think it's Spearhead, so three heavy support. That's led up by Bjorn. So Bjorn's got his Twin Laz, um, his True Claw with a Heavy Flamer. And then we've got Long Fang Squad with two Laz, three Rockets, and a Wolf Guard Pack Leader with... Cyclone Missile Launcher, Wolf Claw, and Storm Boulder. That is a mouthful. Then coming across here, we've got the new painted up unit of uh, Long Fangs. So we've got five with heavy bolters and then just a pack leader. So they'll just be laying down some suppressive fire with their, their heavy bolt guns. Just a nice, cheap, uh, long range support unit. And then we've got the Whirlwind with the uh, Vengeance Round. So the Strength 7, um, I had to think about that. Strength 7, AP 1, 2 damage. 2d3 shots. I always go with that one. I don't know why. It seems to work out better for me. So in this list, um, that gives us 10 command points. And I've spent one to give this bloke the Wolfenstone. So that's the Space Wolf list. This is the 1,500 points I'll be going with. I have started painting to take it up to 1850 because people have been asking for bigger matchups with these guys. And then I will be taking it to 2000. Just got to give me a minute to try and paint these models. I paint all my own models, so it does take a little bit of time. So bear with me, guys. So that's the Space Wolves. Now, the tower that Jakey Boy is going to be heading up. So what have we got in this list? First things first, we're going to be taking it as a custom-made sept, so it's going to have um, stabilization systems, which means that all the big suits can move and fire a heavy weapon without penalty. And the other one is going to be hardened warheads, which means that all missiles in the army are AP1, so smart missile systems on the tanks and the suits, uh, missiles on the Lord here, or the commander, I should say, all that sort of stuff. So it's quite handy. So for his gun, you know, he's got four missile pods, so that takes him up to AP2. He's nice, so he's still getting his eight shots at AP2, so instead of having to pay for the the uh, upgrade to make the AP better. So what do we got in the list? Let's go through it. So, HQ-wise, the front here, Cadre Fireblade. Then we've got the Warlord. He's just gonna be taking um, through Unity Devastation. So you all know what that does. And then he's just armed, 
He's a cold star battle suit and he's armed with four missile pods. So he'll just be flying around, blowing things up, staying way out of reach. The two HQs, then we got one, two, three ten man fire warrior squads. Uh, each have got a marker light in it. So that's the uh, the battalion. Then we've got one, two Pathfinder teams, just with their carbines with the marker lights on top, nice and cheap, just to try and light some things up. Then we've got the Ghost Kill Battle Suit. Now today he's going to be taking the relic um, out of the new book, which is called, just give me one second, the Fusion Obliterator, which means that he's... Uh, just always heavy three, strength nine, AP four, D six damage. So it's just an absolute melting machine. So that'll be pretty cool. Then we've got one, two hammerheads with the, the ion cannons on them and smart missile systems. Then at the back, we've got two riptides with the ion accelerators and smart missile systems. So that's the army. Now, I know all you people out there, that a lot of people that play Tau are going to start saying, oh, not enough drones, not enough drones, all you need to take is drones and suits. No one cares. If you want to play Tau, play them like an actual military. Get some troops on the ground. Get some battle tanks. Get the cool shit. Actually have fun with your army. It's all good and well to always play competitive, but at the same time, you don't want to sacrifice the fun of the game to have shitty looking models as opposed to having fun. All right, so they're the two armies. Space Wolves, Tau, we'll roll up a mission and we'll see what happens. Alright guys. Alright guys, we have rolled up a mission and it is the Four Pillars mission. So, if we go to the centre of the board here, starting on the, the right hand side, there's one here. Coming across here, there's another one. Coming across here, there's another one. And coming across here, there's another one. So, this mission, uh, you got to try and hold as many as the four pillars as you can. So, it is kind of going to force the armies to come forward a bit. There's still quite a bit of distance between these as well. So, it's not super forward, but it is going to be more forward than some of these units would like to be. So, in terms of the setup and deployment, um, the tower rolled the highest and they picked the side. So they picked this board edge, um, and their deployment is starting from the right. So we got the very far hammerhead, riptide, and some pathfinders. In the centre, we've got the ghost kill, having a bit of an overlook of the uh, centre part here. Behind him, we've got a team of 10 fire warriors. Then over here, we've got the cold star commander hidden behind here. Then we've got two units near this objective here, and they are also with the cadre fireblade. Then we have another unit of Pathfinders here, and on the very left-hand side, we have another Hammerhead and another Riptide. So, smart, smart deployment from Jakey Boy because he's divided up his shooting bases into a three-part series, so I've got to decide which one it is I either fire at or which one it is I go for. All right, we'll go around the other side here and have a look at uh, the Space Wolves deployment. So, first things first, I've paid a command point to put the uh, Blood Claws in... Well, it's like deep strike, but they come in from the board edge. Um, then here, this is the best place I could put the uh, whirlwind where nothing can get line of sight on it. It can rain death upon things. Coming across, moving right, we've got the long fangs with the heavy boulders here. In front of them, we've got Bjorn. Then in front of them, we've got the grey hunters. And then in front of them, we have the intercessor squad. Moving across over here, we have the Wolfgar battle leader. The wolf, the wolf Lord. Then we've got the five guys in front of him. And then in this building here, we've got the other Long Fag Squadron. So, as far as it goes at this point, um, the Space Wolves have the first turn. And would you like to steal the initiative? Yep. All right, let's roll in the center here, mate. That's a four. All right, so at this point, Space Wolves will be getting first turn. So as I said, four pills will be moving up on these objectives. I'm kind of glad we've got the first turn because uh, I don't want to be blown off the map before this thing even gets started. So we'll uh, have the Space Wolves first turn, see if we can't get into some good positions and we'll get back to you in a minute. All 
All right, guys, end of Space Wolves turn one. I've made a massive and aggressive push forward. So, starting over from the right, so obviously the Whirlwind stayed still in cover. Um, the Intercessors up the front ran. The Grey Hunters ran up behind them. Bjorn walked because he moves eight. And then the Heavy Bolt, uh, Long Fangs, ran up as well because they, they're only range 36, so I need to get a good field of fire in this centerpiece here. So, very aggressive. Same with the Thunder Wolves, the Lord, and the Battle Leader. I ran them all here, and I put them in the center. So I'm going to make a push down the center, and um, not make a move to the left or right just yet. And then the other Long Fang squad mass had a massive 12-inch run, which was really good too, and got up here. So as far as movement goes, um, I've got Long Fang squads sitting on both objectives, and everything else sort of pushing forward up with them. Um... Damage-wise shooting, the only things that had range to shoot for this round were the Whirlwind and Bjorn. They fired over here and took eight wounds off this guy. So, we've at least taken one of the tanks down a bracket. We didn't get first strike, that's okay. Um, this is not the kind of match where I was thinking I'm going to outshoot this guy. So I just had to try and get off a few shots. But yeah, so that's where I'm at. First turn down, good movement, centre of the board. Now he's going to have to shoot me out of the center of the border. I'm going to start taking all these pillars. So he's going to have to make a move. He's also going to have to get units in there and also hold these objectives to score points. So we'll get back to you at the end of the tower turn and see if there are any wolves left on this table. All right, guys. All right, guys. End of tower turn one. And this was a little bit brutal. So, pretty straightforward turn. There was a little bit of movement. So he sort of angled these guys up moving forward to hold this objective. If we come across here, these guys move forward to hold this objective. The ghost kill moved back. These stayed where they were. These guys moved up here. Uh, the warlord moved out. This thing moved forward a little bit. And this moved around to get a bit of line of sight. Now, pretty much the easy way of looking at this is <laughs> the Thunderwolf unit in the middle is gone. So, pretty much he mark a lit, as Graydon would say, mark a lit, son. <laughs> the Thunderwolf group in the centre here and just fucking blew them off the map. It did take everything in the army to do it because they had storm shields, but he got it done. And I mean, when I say everything in the army, shot at them, both Riptides, both battle tanks, buddy, this guy. This guy, this guy, this guy, all of the guys, everybody, all shot in here. But they did get it done. They killed all five Thunderwolves. Um, there's two ways you can take this. A, that was an absolute shit ton of firepower needed to remove the uh, Thunderwolves. But considering that full marker lights on them and so these guys were just on fire shooting. Hey, take your Storm Shields. But at the end of the day, they are dead. Um, victory points wise, because these guys moved up here, and these guys moved here, and we're holding them, none of us score any points, because you've got to hold one more than your opponent. So the only point that was scored in the first battle round was first strike for killing that, that wolf squad. So now we're in the position where we're going to have to, um, yeah, come back and do something next turn, because I don't know how many more turns we can sustain firepower from units such as these massive robots and tanks at the back here. So, I'll get back to a strategy, have a bit of a chat with the, uh, the other wolves, and we'll, we'll get onto it and get back to our next turn. All right. All right, guys, end of Space Wolf's turn two. And uh, we turned this shit up. We came here to fight, and that's what we've done. So, first things first. Uh, Movement-wise... Obviously, the Long Fang squad stays where they were. They've got in, stays where they were, stayed where they were. They've gotten to a good position now. They're sitting on these objectives at the back, and they're laying down their fire. These guys all sort of move forward slowly. Uh, the intercessors move forward, and they've ended up up here with the Wolf Lord. We'll go through that in a second. Um, and then for the rest of moving, if we come over here, I actually moved on the Blood Cores. I fit them between this tank and this big guy here. They didn't get their charge off though, but I thought it'd be a bit of a distraction. I lost two of them in the Overwatch, but hey, that's the price you pay. You got to you got to pay these gambles when you're playing big. So, um, starting with the shooting, I paid a command point for the Wolf's Eye, um, and what that does is is removes any negs to hit, so they just hit full ballistic skill. 
and I fired across here and deleted the ghost kill. I also paid the command point for the, like this unit for the rerolls to wound. Um, I'll have to check what the stratagem is, but it was two command points. So I paid one to remove the um, neg two to hit because he's got the two drones. Then I paid one to reroll wounds because long fangs have a reroll one to hit as it is. So they were hitting on threes, rerolling ones, and then rerolling their full wounds. I think they did like 18 wounds on the ghost kill and just got rid of him for me, which was nice. All right, moving across here. Um, these guys fired into the Riptide over here and took a wound off him. Uh, Bjorn, the fell handed, the band, the myth, the legend, finished off the tank was over here. Didn't blow up though, he just took the rest of the wounds off it. Um, this here shot into the Riptide as well and took two wounds off it. So the Riptide's down uh, a couple of wounds, so what's he lost now? Four wounds, he's lost four wounds because he overcharged his gun and then I've taken three off him. So there's also still these trains sitting here. These guys with their assault boulders cleared out, I think, eight of the, the fire warriors that were here. And then these guys shot up in here and cleared out the pathfinders. Then that allowed, as you can see here, this gap, we measured it, is actually wide enough for this base to fit through. It doesn't look like it on the camera, but trust me it is, we, we measured it. And he charged through there and got into the fire warriors. And then these uh, intercessors also did too. Now, after we cleaned up the rest of them, we were able to sort of use our maneuvers because there's this guy here, so we're able to maneuver this way to protect my lord. So, that's the end of their turn. These guys are now sitting here, sitting duck. He's still got a lot of stuff on the battlefield. Um, we've got ourselves in a position now, whereas if he can't remove me off one of these, I'm now sitting on three of these and he's only sitting on one. So we'll let him um, have his turn, see what he can do, and get back to his at the end of this. Alright. Alright guys, end of tower turn two. It's uh there's been some shooting, there's been some serious shit go down. Alright, so first things first, we will start with so movement wise. This big fella over here has jumped around this way, going backwards away from the rest of the army. As I said before, Jacob Boy's onto it with the keeping things separated and making you have to choose which way you're going to go. Um, over here, these things sort of just move forward and this moved up here away from where the blood claws were. And then the rest of these guys made a strong push to cover this, this objective. So there's like 20 fire warriors and a cadre fire blade on there. Okay, so shooting wise, we'll start from over here on the right. The big guy here, with no marker lights or anything, shot into here and killed three of the intercessors that were surrounding uh, the big boy. That was it. He's going to stay over there. All right. Oh, these drones ran across here as well and are overprotecting this guy now. But hey, make use where you can. So pretty much everything on this side of the battlefield. So these guys in here, marker lit the shit out of what is now just holes in the ground. And then everything else here... Uh, just obliterated the um, long fangs that were there, which hurts a fair bit because that was the long fangs that had um, like, you know, las cannons and rockets in it. So now I'm sort of forced to uh, be left with not as many heavy weapons. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But um, stratagem wise as well, they use the uplink marker light. That's how they got the five on there. So he landed three, paid command point for uplink marker light. And then that gave him the extra two doing a five, which just made all these guys way more accurate, especially being close proximity with the um, Cadre Fireblade. And the other one was, this guy used the command point too. So he's got the three up Invon save and he also used his uh, shield. So he's got a three up Invon, and, oh sorry. And he also used his weapon to overload. So those were the command points used. Um, as I said, cleared out the back line over here. Got good positioning, long range firepower. I don't really have anything in this section of the field now, so I'm sort of all the way over here. So I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna start moving towards him and see if I can't kill some stuff. So that was a good turn by Jakey Boy. He's uh, taking some good board control. The end of the round though, um, I score one point for having more objectives than him. And that puts us on one point apiece each at the end of uh, battle round turn two. All right, we'll get back to the wolves and see what we can do. Alright guys, end of Space Wolves turn three and what's happened. So, 
First things first, there was a little bit of movement from the guys here going across this way. Um, these guys backed into cover to hold the objective and my wolf lord, as you can see, is all the way around here now. So, that was movement. Shooting wise, we don't have a psychic face. These guys here, with their heavy boulders, fired across into here and killed these guys down to two left. Um, they rolled for the greater good, so they, they stayed there. I think it's called for the greater good, but yeah, they're still on the objective. Um, these guys moved forward and uh, shot into these guys. Um, Bjorn tried to fire into the big guy here. He got two hits, two wounds, and then he rolled two sixes for save throws. So that was a little bit disheartening, but hey, what do you do? So... The other thing that was happened was my Wolfguard battle leader ran over here. He got five hits and five wounds on this guy, but because he used the stratagem to have his three up in Von, he saved all five of them. So no damage done. So hopefully, um, when he jumps out of combat, my Storm Shield holds up. <laughs> Just saying. So, if come around here, the... Um, the Wolf Lord managed to make a charge into the drones. He did a multi-charge. He didn't make it far enough to get into this guy, but he did lose three wounds on the way in due to missile fire. Uh, but he has jumped into these guys. These guys both have the fly keyword, though, so they're going to jump out and just shoot into him. So hopefully he can hold up and um, resist the damage. Other than that, we've sort of put on a... I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we're at at the moment. Sort of push forward and everything like that. He still has a lot of big guns, so after this turn... We'll see how much punishment, you know. There's a big tank sitting back here. Uh, there's still two Riptides on the field, even if they are a tiny bit injured. And there's still Fire Warriors and other things. And this nasty guy with his missiles. So, we'll see what happens. We'll get back to you uh, after Tower Turn 3. Alright, guys. Alright, end of Tower Turn 3. Janky boys fired shots. Shots have been fired. Alright, let's start right here. This guy single-handedly blew away my Wolf Lord. He had four wounds left. Way too many missiles, and because of that uh, hardened missiles or whatever it was, it's AP2 forcing him to use his Belt of Rust and then D3 damage. It's actually quite effective. It's really nice. Um, so, yeah. Consider thinking of using that. Blew him away. Um, over here. So, combination work here. This guy and this guy fired into the Grey Hunters and cleared out most of them except for this last guy. He used the last command point after they finished firing with the tank. Because once he finished firing with the tank, he cleared this guy down to one. And then he decided now that the troops were there, this was closer to this and he used this guy to fire at Bjorn. So that gave me the opportunity to make this guy a lone wolf, which I did. I spent my last command point to make him a lone wolf. Then the big big daddy over here shot into him and killed four wounds off him. So Bjorn's down four wounds. Um, but he also lost a couple of wounds himself in overcharging his weapon, even with the reroll one. So that was a bit of a, you know. Then these guys used their pulse rifles to try and fire in Bjorn, do some more damage. Didn't do any more damage. Coming over here, this guy jumped out of combat with the... Uh, Wolfguard battle leader, fired into him. He actually damaged himself three times overcharging. So he's down nine wounds. But at the same time, he took three wounds off this guy. Um, so now the Wolfguard battle leader is only on one wound. But hey, if he could take out this guy in the next round, that'd be fantastic. So the end of the battle round, it's too all because they killed my uh, Warlord. I hold more objectives, so... At the end of turn three, it's it's too all so far. So this has been hectic. Things have been dying left, right, and centre. Uh, Laz cannons have been going off. Ion cannons have been going off. Heavy boulders have been going off. Missile pods have been going off. So we'll go to Space Wolf's turn four and see if I can't turn it around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to need to remove some of these big, at least one of these suits or something to get it going. So we'll see what we can do. Alright guys, end of Space Wolves turn 4, and it's been a pretty successful turn, can't complain. So first things we'll start over here. The Wolfguard battle leader managed to finish off the Riptide, so that was good. Um, took him out, didn't explode, didn't kill him, so he was able to consolidate into here. I don't know if he'll be able to get back into the battle from this point, but hey, an alive guy is an alive guy. 
Uh, if we go over this way, uh, the heavy boulder guys here shot across here and peppered down one of the units of fire warriors in here to just pretty much dust. Then Bjorn and the Lone Wolf ran in and just finished off everybody that was in here. So the Cadre Fireblade, all the Fire Warriors. There was a little bit of shooting from Bjorn and the Whirlwind and they took this guy down another couple of wounds. So he's lost eight wounds. So at this point, these two are holding this objective. We've got a couple of intercessors still over here. We've got these guys still over here. You know, we've got the Whirlwind and this guy over here. Now at this point... Um, He's not holding any of the objectives, but he definitely has big guns everywhere. He's still got his warlord over here and marker lights to get me marker lit. So, what we'll do is, um, I'm feeling pretty confident at the end of this turn that we've, we've definitely given it a bloody 110% crack. We'll just have to see how much firepower we can receive from these guys at the end of this turn to determine what will happen next. So, hopefully Bjorn and this lone wolf can... Uh, Push pressure onto these guys. Push pressure onto these guys. Yeah, what I mean. Pressure the fuck out of these fish heads. Let's go. All right, we'll get back to you at the turn four off the tower. All right, guys, tower turn four. We'll start here with the bad news. So, guys, mark a lit. Bjorn in here. Lit him up. Blew him away with the riptide. Then the hammerhead shot in. And just smashed the lone wolf to pieces. It was it was quite sad. I was hoping one of them would have survived to run in, whether it was Bjorn or the lone wolf, to attack one of these things. But hey, when you got firepower like hammerheads and riptides, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Over here, however, this guy tried to do a little shifty maneuver around here. Bloody Jake, sneaky little bugger, trying to blow away these guys to lower my body count on uh, the objectives. Now, he didn't manage to do any damage and has probably put himself in a little bit of a threat range because one of these space wolves is packing a motherfucking power fist. Bitch! So, on, at, the, at the way things are going is I'm still holding multiple objectives at the end of the battle round, which gives me another point because I'm holding more than he is. Um, we've still got a whirlwind. We got a long fang squad with some guys. That's all we need to do this work. To be honest though, this is quite scary. So I don't know how this is gonna go down. If, if we're gonna at least just remove the riptide, that's gonna do a lot less punishing. But hey, that's the end of their turn. Um, this guy's still here with heaps of missiles as well. We'll see what happens. It's been a good game so far. So let's just keep this ball rolling. And, and you know, you, you're pointing that power fist. You better put in work, mate. Better do it. Alright guys, end of Space Wolf's turn 5. We've done some doing. Alright, so first things first. These guys move forward to get into a closer position to be able to fire across at uh, this bigger stuff over here. This guy jumped over to hang on to the objective and also be within 6 to give him reroll once to wound. Um, these guys fired into the Riptide and did nothing. That's... Don't even worry about that. Then this guy here fired over because the closest thing was this uh, command here hit him took two wounds off him these guys ran in and my buddy the wolf lord oh, sorry the space wolf's trait of in the assault phase sixes i rolled three sixes he got like seven uh power fist hits on him then i think he wounded like four times but then he only rolled like ones and twos so the damage so this guy's still sitting here with um one wound left in this combat. So that, that's a bit annoying, but that's okay. That's how these things go. So pretty much he's got this guy left on one wound. He's got these guys left and he's got these two big, big things. So pretty much he needs to take an objective and remove me. Otherwise I'm going to win the game on points. So what we'll do is we'll get back to you at the end of the tower turn and see what they can do. All right, guys. Alright guys, end of town turn 5, town turn 5, tower turn 5, and didn't go so well. So, first things first. These guys try to drop down to get closer to use their marker lots on these guys. They missed because A, they had to move and they couldn't get all of them in line of sight. This guy tried to do, he, he did the 6 shots and he done all the other stuff. Wrecked himself again, overcharging, so he's lost 13 wounds. So, so he's on 1 wound. 
This guy over here, however, did manage to kill one of the long fangs. This guy got a taste of his own medicine because he jumped out and fired into these guys and did jack diddly squat. So at this current juncture, that is the end of turn five. The space wolves are on three points, the tower are on two points. On a one or two, I'm gonna roll a little McDice here. This game ends and it'll be a space wolf victory. Let's see what happens. That's a six, so we're gonna go on for one more turn. All right, so, <laughs> that's, that's uh, one of those things. We'll just have to see what happens now. I don't know where it's gonna go from here because this could be bad for me or good for me or who knows. We'll just have a look-see. So, we'll get back to you and see if these guys can't turn it up to 17. All right, guys, end of Space Wolf's turn six, and the game has definitely come to an end. So, what has happened? Let's go through it. So, first things first. The Whirlwind fired up. He blew up the uh, Riptide. The Riptide exploded and killed what was the last Pathfinder. Why was there only one Pathfinder? Because these guys, Assault Boulders, killed four of them before running into the Commander. The Commander's gone because now he only had one wound left and the Power Fist just ripped through him. So that got us Warlord and also able to get back on this objective. Holding one, two, which they cannot possibly hold more. So Space Wolves are on five. And these guys are still on two. All they have left on the battlefield is this battle tank. I guess the honourable thing to do is to roll to see if it ends. It most definitely does end. Because I would be more than happy to let this battle tank just have another round of ripping into these guys. Just to make it fair. But no, that's a three. Um, <laughs> hey, as King Leonidas once said. <laughs> what is your profession? Fucking Space Wolves, mate. They've somehow... With a couple of these little bloody guys, they've got what, two intercessors, a couple of long fangs. This guy who's now going to be the Wolf Lord, he's definitely earned his stripes, and they've got this. So, there you go. So, <laughs> for my man of the match, I'm going with these long fangs with the heavy boulders. Um, they did magnificent work throughout. I actually underestimated heavy boulders. They're really cheap, nice long range, lots of shots. And just um, because they're not as threatening in the start of the game, Jake wasn't firing at him. Like it was one of those things where he's firing at the last cannons, firing at Bjorn, firing at everything else. But these things just managed to stick it through. And in the late game, like having a full unit of them, just mowed down units. So that was really handy. Um, I'll also give a special mention to this guy who first game with his thunder hammer and whatnot managed to put in some bloody good work. Jakey Boy has, has chose to... Pick this because he said it was the last man on the battlefield. But we did have a discussion just before, and I am a firm believer of this. People are going to argue with me. I like hammerheads better than riptides. So that's that's just how it is. They're half the price. They've got a better ballistic skill. They don't have as much defense, but they do have the same amount of firepower with a better ballistic skill. You can have two of these for every riptide. So I don't know. I like the look of them better. Um, when I started painting this tower army up, I, I like it better, you know, fire warriors and battle tanks. That's how it was once upon a time before Riptides come along. Don't get me wrong, I love Riptides. I own three of them, painted them up. They're beautiful. But hey, so anyway, that brings us to the end of another battle report. An absolute slugfest, shootout, bugger all things left, and um, hope you've enjoyed it. We'll get back to uh, putting some more stuff together for you and look after yourselves out there and, and enjoy everything you're doing. Get that painting done. All right, guys.